Boy, I thought long and hard this morning about whether or not I wanted to make this video. I just have to. Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Real estate agents, YouTubers, stop lying. Stop making clickbait. Clickbait is when you've got a headline that is nowhere near the truth. Now, I try to be really careful with mine. A little inside information. I actually have a company that helps me with my thumbnails, and they're under very strict rules that I don't want clickbait. I don't want sensationalism. And sometimes they've made thumbnails, and I've had to get a hold of them and go, nope, nope, we're not using that. But I saw a headline yesterday that just absolutely made me want to dive into my computer. And that headline said, new report, 50% upside down and some of you probably know who this gentleman is he's been scaring people for two years i think he's been a real estate agent for less than two years and i got i got i gotta watch this i gotta see where he's getting this data 50 percent of homeowners are upside down really 64 percent of homeowners in the united states are sitting in a sub four percent mortgage i gotta watch this video and twenty-two thousand of you did <laughs> so the thumbnail worked. It's very sensationalist. Got your attention. It's very doom and gloom. I've experimented with a couple of thumbnails just for giggles. And I have one where Pat and I do our Friday show, our Friday live stream, and I put in a picture of a nuclear explosion behind me, and I just titled it Update. That's one of our best performing videos, live streams. Why? Because it looks like everything's going to hell in a handbasket. I have a nuclear explosion behind me. There's one YouTuber out there. I really enjoy him. He's very entertaining. But every one of his thumbnails now are flames. And it's things like two days left. This is urgent. It's all sensationalism. So let's get back to what ticked me off about this video that I saw. And why I urge you to look at the data and the details when you see these. So the real number is, and he states it finally in the video, the BlackRock estimates that 8% of buyers who bought in 2022 are currently upside down on their mortgage. That's a far cry different, isn't it, from 50% of all homeowners are upside down? That's 8% of people that purchased this year. That's nothing alarming. There's been many times I've purchased and the house value went the other way. You've probably experienced the same thing. How alarming is that? How bad should that be? And then he goes on to say that, and they anticipate that to get to like 40% 40, 40 more real soon. Okay, if that's true, if 40% of people that bought in 2022 are upside down, that's not half the people in the country. So why do you put that title on your thumbnail? or in your description. You're misleading people. I get it. People want, they like sensationalism. They like the big headlines. There are those that feel like the market's going to crash. And so you get on YouTube and you find videos that fit your narrative. And you've got people that are making videos to fit their narrative instead of looking at the data to determine what the narrative should be. And in this particular video, it also makes you think, well, just how bad is it when you get upside down on a mortgage? So I've been there several times. And if we just take an example and say, now I get it, we have an affordability problem. And I'm not telling people go out and buy today. That's not the intention of my channel. Although I had somebody accuse me of that this week. He said, uh, oh, look at this. This is the guy that was telling you to buy six months ago. What a jerk. And I... I challenge you, go back six months and see if I ever told you to buy. There's some periods where I said, you know what? During the bidding wars, I'd sit on your hands. I'd wait this out. So today, I'm not going to tell you it's a good time to buy or a bad time to buy. What I'm going to tell you is, look, if you bought a house today or in December at uh, 500000 and you put 5% down, and you pulled out an amortization table and you said, well, let's let's see what this looks like. So I end up kind of running through it here. And you got a down payment of $25,000, right? And so that's your money that's at risk. 
So what else would you do with that $25,000 if you weren't buying a home? Would you put it in the stock market? Would you put it in bonds, CDs, crypto? Um, what is your opportunity to grow your wealth? So you have a loan amount of $475,000 now. Now, that's true. That's a mortgage. That's a risk. If you lose your job and you have to move, somehow you've got to cover that loan amount. But what you have to cover is your payment. Now, the estimated payments here are showing... I put an interest rate of 3% because that's where they were when the market was hot. So it gives you a total payment of $24.15. Now, what were you paying in rent? If you're in a three-bedroom, two-bath house, you were probably $22 to $2,400, no doubt. So instead of paying somebody else's mortgage, somebody else's insurance, you're now paying yours. So you're going to end up with about $15,000 a year in deductibles or interest rate deductions, and you're going to end up being able to deduct your real estate taxes. But what I really want to point out is, what if you stayed put? So there's articles out there now that say, well, um, it's going to take 10 years for these real estate prices to get back up to where they were. Okay, so let's look out 10 years. Let's go to the amortization table and go to scroll down here. So we started in 2022. So where are we going to be as far as the amount of money we own in 2030? Two. So scroll, scroll, scroll. Here we are. 2032. It's coming up. And right here. Here. There we are. There's January 2032. $359,994. So you started out on 475 and now you're at $359,000. Now, if it turns out that it's going to take us 10 years to go from our peak down and then back up and you get back up in 10 years you're $150,000 ahead of where you started that's a good thing if you're renting you're not ahead you're behind during that period rent's going to go up going to go down real estate's going to go up it's going to go down interest rates are going to change but your payment stayed the same if you bought at the peak of the market you got a good payment it's staying the same it's not going to change it's not going to reset we're not Canada so you've got a fixed payment amount. And probably during those 10 years, you may have made some modifications on the house and maybe it's worth more than 500000 So my point is that temporarily being upside down in a real estate market is more common than you think. And it happens a lot. It happened to your parents. It happened to your grandparents. It'll happen to you. There are periods where your home is worth more than you paid for it, way more, like two years ago. And there's periods where you're sitting there going, ooh, this is bad. So I kind of look at it like a 401k. Sometimes you just don't want to look at it. But because of the rack, rapid acceleration that we've had in real estate, everybody wants to check and see how much their home is worth now. Do they make more money? What if I sell it now? What am I going to do? Well, if you do lose your job and you own the house, I think you have more options then to get help than you do if you're renting. Because if you're renting and you lose your job, you can't afford rent, what are you going to do? You know, you're probably going to have to move in with somebody and you're going to have to find another place to rent that's cheaper and you probably can't afford that. If you own a home and you lose your job and you've got room, maybe you can bring people in as roommates to help you. Maybe you can bring some family in. Maybe you can move in with family and then put your house up for rent. And so you can't cover the whole $2,400, but maybe you can cover $1,800 of it and you can afford to pay the gap. So you have more options if you own the home than you do that if you're renting. If you're renting, you lost your job, you're gone, you're out. So there's a lot of benefits to owning. Now, there are tremendous benefits in buying real estate when things are really bleak and selling them later if you want to be an investor or buying homes at a real bargain and then 10 years from now, selling it for way more than what you paid for it. I get it, that's great. But it's going to be hard to recognize the bottom. We won't know where the bottom is until three or four months after that has already occurred. Nobody rings a bell and says, okay, time to buy now. And the interesting dynamic that I'm seeing in this market today is there are a lot of you out there waiting. Oh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for when it gets to my price and they get down there. I'm jumping in and buying a bunch of rental houses. Are you? Because you and 30,000 other people are thinking the same thing. So are you really going to get that bargain? And if you're going to buy these rental houses, what's the vacancy rate? Is 4% now? Is it going to be 10% then? Have you done your due diligence to figure out what you can get on rent? Who's going to manage them? So start thinking about that as you're going forward and looking at this market. How will you know when the market's at that sweet spot where you want to buy? 
People are always tossing me numbers. I'm not getting into they're down 20%. Okay. Well, if we're down 20%, the news that you're going to see is going to be bleak. Oh, God, real estate's getting pounded. This is terrible. And you're going to be cowering in fear. Oh, I don't think I should get in now. It's probably going to go down another 20. So there's a lot to think of. I caution you again, pay attention to the headlines, the scaremongers, and the details. Real estate can go anywhere. It really can. It can get bad this year. It can also muddle along flat. Or it could slightly improve by the time we get into 2024. Nobody knows. And when you say nobody knows, nobody knows we're going to crash. They shouldn't be putting out these scare videos trying to scare the bejesus out of you that things are really bleak when in fact they're not. If they get really bleak, there should be numbers to look at to validate what they're saying. So to say we're going to be down 50% and then you get into the meat of the article and it says there's a fraction of the people that are down 8%, I'm sorry, you're just lying to people and you need to knock it off. I feel better now to you. Take care. Have a great day.